Hey Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter three, number 90, and here we were given this information over here. So we had some events, whatever C and D are, and we were given these probabilities. So the probability of C, probability of D, and then the probability of C given D. And the first thing we were asked to find was the probability of C and D. Now that and, right, this one, that shows up in four out of those five formulas that I talked about. And of those five formulas, you can always use the first two, right? We can always use the multiplication rule and the addition rule. And so I opted, because I was given this conditional probability over here, I opted to use the multiplication rule or the, the conditional formula. But this, if we want to sound fancy is called the multiply, oops, maybe I can spell, maybe not. Wait for it, multiplication rule. And if I still spelled that wrong, you can judge me silently. <laughs> um, so anyways, I know it looks like a division rule, but really it's multiplication and we're gonna, we're gonna do that um, right now. So here is formula two, right? Now let, let's color code these things so we can see this playing out. I know the left side. Right? I know the probability of C given D. I, I was told that number was 0.6. And let me go ahead and do the probability of D here. Right? I know that this is 0.5. So I can substitute those values in. And then my only variable left is that numerator, which is the probability of C and D. So why? let's go back to why this is called the multiplication rule. Right? So let me go ahead. Right? I put the 0.5 here. And I put the 0.6 here. And then if I want to solve for C and D, or the probability of C and D, I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.5, right? This is going to cancel out, and only thing that survives on that right side is the probability of C and D, and then I just need to multiply these two numbers together, and that's what I'm doing here. Probability of 0.6, excuse me, 0.6 times 0.5 is 0.3. So I'm just going to add this here, that now I know the probability of C and D is equal to 0.3. And just so we're, since we're in this, that also means the probability of D and C is 0.3, because it doesn't matter if you say C and D or D and C, right? Same thing, the and is the and, overlap is overlap. All right, so for part B, it says our C and D mutually exclusive. Well, we have that formula, that fifth formula that says, hey, if you wanna test if two things are mutually exclusive, see if the probability of their overlap is zero. Right, and was the probability of their overlap zero? Well, we know their overlap's probability was 0.3. We literally just found it. That is not equal to zero. So the answer is no, they're not mutually exclusive. And in part C, they ask, hey, are these things independent? And we have two formulas that we can use for that. You can say, is the probability of C and D equal to the probability of C times the probability of D, that's one. Or you could use the conditional formula and say is the probability of C given D equal to the probability of C. You could even go the other way. You could actually go is the probability of D given C equal to the probability, oops, of D. Now you can see that for my write-up for this part, I, I use this first version, right? And, and you have the option, pick whichever equation you want and see if equality holds. And again, if I'm gonna try and color code this stuff just so we can see it, all right, so let me go ahead and actually color code the probability of C as 0.4. So for here, right, I plugged in 0.4. We had the probability of D, we said that was in pink, I put 0.5. I didn't actually color code the probability of C and D. Let's go with green, right? We knew the probability of C and D was 0.3, so I plugged that in. Equality doesn't hold. These are not independent. Now, just for fun, because this all is fun, let's try this version. I want you to see this version, because I tend to go with the AND formula. That's my bias, and I, I don't want to bias you. So I could try, hey, is the probability of C given D equal to the probability of C? Well, quite literally, let's see, right? We know the probability of C given D, we have that. We know the probability of C, so let's see if equality holds. Well, C given D is 0.6, is that equal to 0.4? No, it's not. So again, they are not independent. All right, so then part D asks you for the probability of C or D. Well, this is the addition rule, All right? This is formula one. So let's go run formula one which says we want to add their probabilities respectively, but subtract any overlap, anything that we might have counted twice. Well, let's figure this out. All right, and actually, let me scooch this just 
I'm gonna squish this a bit just so we can keep the color coding going. So if I go through this, I have the probability of C, which we said was that yellow number. I have the probability of D, which we said was the pink number. And then we have C and D, right? we found that in part A. So I put all of that together and I find out C or D is 0.6. Okay, great. Now this last part, part E is saying, hey, what's the condition if you go the other way? Right? Well, if I want to, again, we're going back to using the multiplication rule or formula 2. All right, my numerator now, I would say D and C, but as I mentioned up top, that's the same thing as C and D. And then my denominator now is probability of C. Okay, let me squish this again just so we can see all these, these numbers that I'm trying to use. I've got to squish it just a wee bit more. Here we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take their and right? D and C, we knew that was the green number. Probability of C, we said that was the yellow number. I do that ratio, right? 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, and I find out the answer is 0.75. All right, so there we go with number 90. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.